So, hello, saints. It is Sister with a Testimony, and I have a basket of goodies I wanted to share with you all. And um, I found a really interesting scripture in Deuteronomy, chapter 26. And when you come into the land which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance and possess it and dwell in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the land, which you shall bring in from the land which the Lord your God gives you, and shall put it in a basket. And you shall arise and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to place his name. Cool. So what are you saying, Lord? Do you want us to take a basket full of goodies to your place where your name is? Uh, Saints, I've been doing some... Um, random acts of kindness lately. I call it Rackham, Random Acts of Kindness Empowerment Ministries. And uh, so I have this beautiful old basket uh, that I found and I purchased, and I have filled it with wonderful gifts. Uh, the greatest gift of all would be the Word of God rich, richly dwelling in you. Um, of course, I have like little cards and a lot of times we'll find people that look like they don't have any money or uh, for whatever reason we're led of the Holy Spirit to give them a random act of kindness with a card and some wonderful glitter in it and usually five bucks. Um, food. Everybody likes food. How about flowers with a card or a bottle of water? Of course, this one's empty, saints, because I don't want it getting my flowers and cards wet. Uh notebooks that people can write in. This one's mine. I'm not giving it away, so I don't want you to get a false sense of uh, me giving that one away, but it's a good idea to just have notebooks. And of course, the pens, the pens um, with the little flower, because everybody needs a pen. Um, but saints, between money and kindness, um, you know, money always talks, but we don't stick around for them to open up the envelope with the money in it. Uh, we usually don't stick around at all because unless they ask for something or they ask for prayer or they just really, really have a need, um, we're there to do the random act of kindness. And um, the Bible says, do things in secret. It says, and you shall go to the priest who shall be in those days and say to him, I profess this day to the Lord your God that I have come into the land which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. And the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the Lord your God. Wow. In those days, you actually took your basket of first fruits. Aha! So some people say first fruits is not for today. I think you need to be led of the Lord and study the word of God out for yourself. So having said that, saints, let's look at the ancient, ancient language that I spoke to you about the other day, the Odeo, the sacred promises. So a basket, the pictorial ancient language for basket, there's the picture. The number nine is associated with that basket. Uh, Matthew chapter six, verses two through four. That would be a scripture reference, also Deuteronomy 26. So, it's called Tet, the number 9. It's considered a basket. They've changed that in the modern Hebrew. So, saints, let's again go back to the sacred promises, the Odeo, Zephaniah 3, 9. Of course, it means to surround or contain or store things surround contain or store how about catching fish drawing people in generosity giving in secret saints you don't need to let the left hand know what the right hand is doing i'm not telling you that i'm doing this so that i want vain glory from men i'm encouraging you to get out and do a random act of kindness and empower someone else Give of your time, of your fruit, of your gift, of your seed, of food, of money, of blessings. 
when you put it in a basket and you present it and let someone choose it for themselves, they might need the word of God. Um, everybody needs the word of God, but they may need the word because they've never owned a Bible. So you're literally taking of your sustenance, your first fruit. Um, back then it was considered a tithe. Today, all we can think of is giving 10% of our money. Saints, if you would study the word of God, you would know that your basket is full because of what you do for the Lord and do for others and give. It's not about, you can't just put $10 in the offering plate, tip God, and think that you've done him a service. You think you're serving God and you're serving yourself because you're pr probably giving because somebody told you you had to. If your heart ain't right, forget it. You are to take some of the first of all the fruit of the land which you shall bring in from the land which the Lord your God gives you and shall put it in a basket and you will arise and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to place his name. You put it in a basket. You take it to the Lord. It had to do with what you grew in the ground. And the priest is going to take the basket from your hand in verse 4 and set it down before the Lord your God. And you will speak and say before the Lord your God, My father was led to Aram, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there for a short time, and there he became a great, a nation, a great, mighty, and populous one. Wow. And the Egyptians mistreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard work. And when we cried to the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our labor and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with a great revelation with signs and with wonders. And we came to this place. The Lord has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which thou, O Lord, has given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship there before the Lord your God. The basket. Do you have anything in your basket? Are you catching any fish for the Lord, saints? Are you drawing people in with your generosity? Are you giving in secret? Saints. Get a basket, fill it up, go give in secret. You don't have to get on the internet and tell anybody about it. I'm encouraging you. It's something that God has put in my heart. A lot of times it does lead to ministry. And if it leads you to ministry, God bless you. Do it. Do it. Look at verse 11. And you will rejoice. You shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. You and the Levite and the sojourner which is among you. That is among you. When you have finished tithing all the tithes of your produce in the third year, which is the year of tithing, then you shall give to the Levite, the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow that they may eat within your towns and be filled. Saints, this ain't about just giving your money to a local church. Because if you'll study tithing, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I think I've been lied to. I think I've been brainwashed. Oops. If you are Jesus' disciples, you will remain in his word. I know it's rubbed off. There's a reason for that. But it, you can still see the remnants of Holy Bible. Okay? Saints. Holy Bible. If you'll get in that word and study to show yourself approved, you won't be brainwashed and you won't be, well, let's just called, let's just call it what it is. You won't be reeled in. When you have finished tithing the tithes of your produce in the third year, which is the year of tithing, then you shall give to the Levite. That's that, you know, you're going to get it. You're going to give to the preacher. You're going to give to the sojourner, the fatherless, the widow that they may eat. Then you shall say before the Lord, your God, I have brought all the hallowed things out of my house and also have given them to the Levite, to the sojourner, to the fatherless, to the widow, according to all thy commandments, which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. Saints, tithing is not about giving 10% of your money to a congregation that is owned by a 501c3 corporation. 
It is about serving the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Oh, I know some of the pastors are going to hyperventilate now. Go ahead, get you a little brown bag, breathe into it, get in the Word of God, and stop lying to people. Wow. Then you shall say, hmm, wow. Then you shall say, verse 13, you, not the preached, preacher, not the priest. I have brought all of the hallowed things out of my house. Think about that, saints. I have not transgressed thy commandments. In the New Testament, it says, give willingly out of a cheerful heart, not because you've been told to, not because you've been drilled in your head that you have to or you're, you can't be in the church, you can't be a member of the church because you're not tithing. Uh, the pastor's not going to come and uh, help you or pray with you or do anything for you, uh, anything, because you haven't paid them money. Verse 14, I have not eaten of them in my morning, neither have I touched them while I was unclean, nor used any of them for funerals. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. Saints, that means that you didn't, your offering's not defiled. Your offering is pure and holy unto the Lord. When it comes from the heart, it's acceptable. You go back to Cain and Abel. It's accepted of the Lord because your heart is right. You haven't used your stuff for ill means or ill gain. In other words, I guess, you know, if you're a drug addict or you're a drug pusher or a drug dealer and you make a lot, a lot of money and you send 10% of your money to the church so that you can be absolved of your sins, um, I don't think that's going to work here because it's unclean, Okay. It's, it's unclean. Think about that. Is your offering clean? Or are you giving it because you've been coerced by men and women using the word against you to make you feel guilty? Guys, if you ever feel guilty about giving to the Lord, you don't need to give to him. This is you needing to pray. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven and bless thy people Israel and the land which thou hast given us as thou did swear to our fathers a land that flows with milk and honey. This day, this day, the Lord your God has commanded you to do these statutes and judgments. You shall therefore keep and do them with all your heart and with all your soul. Saints, I'm not preaching legalism to you. I'm not preaching that you're under the law. I'm not saying that. I'm saying give a random act of kindness. Empower someone else in the word. Richly bless people from your first fruits. It's not all about giving them. And I don't have a pro Guys, give to the local church. But don't be under some sort of understanding that you have to give in order to get. Because if you're giving in order to get, you're giving for the wrong reasons. This day the Lord your God has commanded you to do these statutes and judgments. You shall therefore keep and do them with all your heart and with all your soul. It's all about the heart. You have confessed the Lord this day to be your God and promised, promised to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his judgments and his commandments and to hearken to his voice. And the Lord has promised you again this day to be his beloved people as he has promised you that you shall keep and do all his commandments and that he shall exalt you above all nations which he has made in praise and name and in honor and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God as he has spoken. Saints, this is not about any sort of um, you got to do this or you got to do that. This is merely saying if you'll read the word and study for yourself. If you will get in the Holy Bible, if you will get in the Word, if you will minister to you, you need to minister to yourself sometimes by getting in the Word of God, rightly dividing it, saints, and understanding what thus saith the Lord. 
not by what a man says and doctrines of demons and doctrines of men that they've pulled straight out of the Bible and twisted, but because you go back to the ancient language and you understand what the true word of God is saying to you, your baskets shall be overflowing. Your baskets, you will be willing to go catch fish for the Lord. You will be fisher, fishers of men and not of, you know, money. You will draw people in generosity. You will give in secret. You won't have to be seen or heard. But you will want to do these things because you are so overwhelmed with the goodness of God. He's such a good, good God. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 2 through 4. And we'll wrap this up. Therefore, when you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you just as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the marketplaces so that they may be glorified by men. Truly, I say to you that they already have received their reward. But when you give alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, secretly, saints. And your father who sees in secret shall himself reward you openly. Check it out, saints. Go do some random acts of kindness. I'm encouraging you to get up and do something. Don't think that if you give, you know, 10% of your cash earnings to the church on Sunday and you live any old way you want to, that you're going to, that you're following God's commandments. The Old Testament law, we're no longer under. But God didn't do away with the commandments. So you're supposed to be doing and giving of your basket that is overflowing and overrunning with goodness and mercy and grace. You will be surrounding people with love and with respect and honor, honoring them. And you will be giving in generosity. You'll be doing it in secret. You won't have to be known. Again, saints... It's not about being seen or heard. It's about giving from the heart. If the Lord tells you to give of your money and you're okay with that, good deal. But I'm just saying there is a different way to look at this from the truth that sets you free. Let your basket be overflowing so that you can bless people. So that you are willing to take that basket, fill it up with first fruits from what you have worked and earned, and be able to give of your heart. If you get to pray for someone, that's just icing on the cake. Whether it's food or money or the word of God that you just give them a Bible, a flower with a pen, a and a cold glass of water, whatever. Do it out of kindness, and you will empower someone. You might even save their lives, saints. So again, would you please study the Word of God for yourself to show yourself approved and stop listening to men? Um, if you'll look into tithing for yourself, the Lord will reveal it to you. We should absolutely, totally give more than what you think you should give but hey you got to get it for yourself saints bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me thank you father god for giving me the ability to have in order to give and lord i don't give in order to have i have in order to give and i thank you lord for your word i thank you for grace and mercy and i thank you father that someone will get this Maybe not everybody, but somebody. I bless you, saints. I love you, saints. Look into the look into the Word of God. You'll find out that 501c3, 501c3 corporations are corporations. They are businesses. They are owned by the government. You should be ministering to one, and that's the Lord God Himself. And if you find a place to worship and fellowship, wonderful. But don't be a part of a corporation. 
be a part of the corporate body of Christ, a living, breathing organism that will take their baskets before the Lord and give to the fatherless, the widows, the hungry, the maimed, the blind. I could go on and on, saints. I love you. God bless you. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus. And I pray the Lord God Almighty will open the eyes of your heart. He'll give you a greater discernment and you will get in the word for yourself. Word. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus to you to hide, protect, and keep you. Word. Get in it. Bask in it. Dwell in it. Let it richly dwell in you. Jesus said, if your word abides, if my word abides in you, and you abide in me, you will ask anything and it will be done of you. Well, it'll be done for you, saints. But you got to abide in the word. Be careful concerning your alms. Do not do them in the presence of men merely that they may see them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. Bam! Word! I love you. God bless you.